Hello everybody and welcome to a practical Python with Flask tutorial series. In this video and in this series what we're going to be talking about is building this website you see here basically from scratch to where it is now. So pythonprogramming.net is my website. That's where we host a bunch of uh, Python programming tutorials. Basically all the tutorials you see on my channel are also on this website also in written form. So we're going to be using Flask, which is a Python web framework, and I actually already have uh, a basic series on Flask, which is right here. So you can go through those if you want to get the basics, but this series is going to be a more uh, practical and pragmatic approach, and we're actually going to build a website. So depending on your learning style, one of these two series will probably be more interesting to you. So what we're going to be using is actually this website is fairly basic and fairly easy to build. So it shouldn't be too difficult actually if this is your first entrance into even web development in general. Although I would suggest you know at least the basics of HTML uh, just so you can kind of follow what's happening. Most web developers that I know don't tend to write the majority of their own HTML and CSS and even like JavaScript. They copy and paste from examples and they edit and kind of manipulate to their liking. So uh, in staying with the reality of things, that is actually what we'll be doing here. The Flask will be all handwritten. There shouldn't be, uh, at least that I can think of, any copy and paste there, but a lot of uh, Bootstrap and stuff like that. I'll show you exactly the process I go through. So Bootstrap has a website and you go there and you can kind of look at their examples of things that you can do with Bootstrap and then you just basically copy and paste and kind of edit and change. So it's actually a lot easier than it, it might seem. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. So we're just gonna jump in and just, just go. So there won't be really too much other ex explanation. I'll try to explain things as I go as far as the first time around what's happening. But other than that, um, it's going to be a pretty practical approach. So the first thing we need, obviously, is some sort of server. You can host it locally if you want. Uh, the only thing I'll say before we go this route is, one, I'm going to put it on a live server so it will be accessible via the internet. Do not have the same live server or production server as your development server. So basically, do not develop on your live website. It's a bad idea for a couple of reasons, or at least a couple major reasons. First is it's bad for your users, right? They're going to have a lot of downtime and disruption and bugs and all this kind of stuff. But even more importantly, it's a security risk. You, If you're developing, you're going to introduce bugs. And even if they're for a short-lived time or whatever, someone can get in, uh, build up a backdoor or whatever, and, or even just get in and don't even need a backdoor. <laughs> Maybe one of your security measures is uh, bugged out because of some update you've made. Something like that. It's just a bad idea. Do not develop on a live server. That's all I'm going to say on the matter. We are going to be developing on a server that's accessible via the internet for a couple of reasons. We want to uh, have a server that, as, as I code, I can at least tell you about things that happen. So when you take Python from the local little sandbox mode on your computer and you put it on a web server all of a sudden uh, the poop hits the fan and <laughs> things just don't work the same as you expect them to all of a sudden for example Python's garbage collection I don't know they just stop collecting garbage so uh, there's a lot of like little things that come when you push to production so I'd like to kind of talk about them in line as we code so with that let's get started because I'm doing a tutorial series and because I want it to be a live server, I'm going to be using DigitalOcean. And the main reason why I will do use them is because they have a $5 a month option. My preferred host is actually Linode.com, but their cheapest option is $10 a month. So I'm going to DigitalOcean. Uh, I have links to both in the description. They are referral links, and it gets me discounts on my hosting. So if you use them, thank you. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I'll be using DigitalOcean. As far as the rest of the tutorial goes, you actually, it does not matter which host you use and you can even host locally if you want. It's totally fine. Uh, but we will be using MySQL. So if you're hosting locally, especially on Windows, you are going to have a headache. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna choose this $5 a month Thing, I would type in, I've already created the server, but the name I, I, ours is going to be is Flask Toots. Uh, so you'll choose this size, Flask Toots. You can always resize later, don't worry about it. 
uh, you can pick your region. This is kind of it doesn't really matter much nowadays, but if you're expecting your website to be mostly used, let's say, in London, you would pick a London-based server. Mostly in the United States, pick one of the United States. Uh, you've got West Coast, East Coast, uh, all around the world. You know, you might want to pick one of these other websites or uh, server locations. Settings here, I would. Uh, the, this one's the only major one. You will pay extra for enabling backups, but you will not regret it. Everybody thinks they won't need backups, or everybody thinks that they're going to make their own backups. Some people do. Congratulations if that's you. Uh, I used to think I would. I did it every now and then, but I, not enough. I've never regretted paying for backups. Uh, distributions. We're going to be doing this series. You can you can use 14.04 Ubuntu if you want, uh, but we're going to do it with 14.10, so it's the newest version. If there's a newer version as you're watching, feel free to use it. It should be totally fine. Uh, and then scrolling down, you can add SSH keys, keys if you're familiar with doing that. We're not going to cover that here. And when you're all done, you'll click create a droplet. Once you create the droplet, it usually takes about a minute. But once you've done it, you should it'll be done. And you'll come after basically on DigitalOcean even to get here. I didn't really say much. But you create an account, obviously, <laughs> log in and click create a droplet. Uh, and then once you've done that, you'd click on droplets and you'd come here. I just don't really want to show all my other droplets and their IPs, so <laughs> I just want to show this one. Uh, so once you come in here, you've got Flask Toots, uh, and this is our droplet. It's powered on, but you don't know the or the password if you use DigitalOcean. If you use Linode, you actually you'll go into like settings and you'll set the password yourself, and that's it. If you use DigitalOcean, they will send you an email. Now, I've got it up on my phone. And you'll need to, the first time you log in, you'll change the password. So being that this is a pragmatic and practical series, I'm just going to show literally everything I do. So now I need to go change my password. Uh, there's a couple of methods for logging in. For now, I'm just going to use the console. I promise we will not be using this console uh, in the rest of the series. I'm just going to use it because it's here. Uh, and we're going to use it. So anyway, I'll click on console access. It'll connect. If it is just a black screen, hit like the enter key or something, and you'll see here it says something and it's connected, but I don't see a login. I hit enter. There's my login. Uh, the initial username is root, and so I'm going to use root for the login. And then the password they sent to you, it's probably a jumbled up list of letters. I'm going to enter mine. Okay, so I logged in, and now it says, basically, since this is the first time we've logged in, I have to change my password again. So here I go to change it. Uh, well, first you have to enter the current one. So enter that same password they sent you again. Okay, now you enter a new password. This will be the password you better remember. Okay, and just for the record, obviously, again, if this is a live server for your password, you want to... Obviously, pick something that's a decent password uh, that someone isn't going to be able to guess, or it can't be a dictionary word. Although I'm pretty sure Linux will actually decline you if you attempt to enter a dictionary word. It'll be like, no, that's not good enough. Pick something better. <laughs> so anyway, so we're in, uh, and now I want to talk about. We're not going to use this console. I think it's just kind of silly to use it, but um, so we're going to leave, and that's basically it. The only other thing, just remember what your password is. Uh, or I mean not your password, your IP address and your password, remember that, that's a good idea and because you're going to use this IP address now, how are we going to actually connect to our website there's tons of options out there, my choices may not be your choices and that's totally fine, uh, it really doesn't matter in the end, you just need to uh, get files to and from and be able to issue commands I tend to like uh, SCP and I use WinSCP. I'm going to bring it down here in just a second. Uh, let me get this. Let's see. Move this over here. Good enough. Okay. So this is WinSCP and I've connected as my root user so it stuffs me in this root. But this is, uh, we can go back. Whoops. We can go back here and this is, this are all like the, fi the directories and files of uh, our server. Right now there's not too much here for us. I can't really show you too much because this is just a clean server. But basically all the files that are required. So this is WinSCP and Win for Windows, SCP for secure copy and paste. So it's a lot like an FTP client like FileZilla if you're familiar. You can also use FileZilla for exactly the same reasons why I'm using SCP. I like SCP, it's a little faster generally, but this will actually fall back on SFTP, which is Secure File Transfer Protocol. 
uh, which is what FileZilla is, although FileZilla is FTP or SFTP, it doesn't, it, uh, you kind of choose. And so anyway, this is what, how I will transfer files to and from. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that once we actually have some files, and I'll talk about the editors and stuff like that and how to change them. So that's WinSCP. If you're not on Windows, use another SCP client. Uh, or use, you know, you can use FileZilla if you're on Windows. I know Mac OS supports FileZilla. Not really sure what program I would use if I was on Linux, but uh, I guarantee you there's some some program. Or you can also SCP via the command line. So lots of options there. I don't. I'm not going to go through everyone's options, but at least I'll show you on Windows uh, how it was done. Finally, the other one uh, that is pretty much a must need, uh, if must need, a must have is uh, some sort of SSH which is uh, secure shell and SSH is so we can connect to our server and it's the same thing that we see here with this console right it's the command line of your server and so this is where you issue all kinds of basically commands uh, to your server and we're going to use it a lot of times uh, at least for setting up installing packages getting them uh, starting and restarting stopping services and stuff from running this is where you'll do it so you'll want to have some sort of shell uh, I use putty and that works on Windows pretty sure that works on uh, Mac OS although I'm, I think you can actually SSH you can SSH both on Mac and on Linux without a program. Basically, you need it for Windows. So anyway, again, this is how I do it on Windows. If you have a, a different operating system, you just basically you need to figure out how to do SCP or some sort of file transferring thing because it makes development a lot easier. And then also some form of SSH. Now, anyway, I'm going to log in. Make sure that worked. Good. Once you're logged in, you need to do a couple of things. Uh, first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is change some settings here. We're going to come down to appearance, change my f uh, font size for you fellas. So it's a little easier to see. And then also colors, default foreground. You don't really have to do this. I'm just doing it to make it easier for you guys to see. Apply. Good. Full screen this bad boy. And now, Basically, the first thing you should always do when you first get a server is the following sudo apt get update. And this basically updates apt get because you'll find that sometimes you'll try to install things and it'll be like, oh, that doesn't exist. It exists, it's just apt get is not updated. And then sudo apt get upgrade. And then it asks you, hey, do you want to do this? We'll just hit yes. If you're not familiar with uh, the terminal, basically, I do have some tutorials on the terminal as well. Just like I have basics on Flask, I got basics on the terminal. Although, just like you'll be able to learn Flask through this series, you'll probably learn quite a bit about the terminal just following along. I'll try to explain as I go, and just like with all of my videos and basically anything with Flask and all that, if we do anything in these videos that you don't understand or you're not really sure what it did or whatever, or you're having a problem, leave a comment below and I I will help you out. We'll figure out what's going on. So don't really worry about that. Don't feel stupid or anything like that. It's kind of confusing and daunting the first few times that you deal with these command lines. Anyway, uh, upgrade is taking a while. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and cut off the video here. That's kind of where I wanted to stop anyway, so it doesn't matter. This shouldn't take you know about a few minutes usually. Um, but anyway, unless it's been a long time. Uh, so that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until the next video.